Only the communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage. I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Severic, from many of the incidents in this unusual story, here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Severic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. It was weird, and it was terrifying. I'd begin to get so much into the choking spirit of my character that I'd talk and act like a real communist, even to myself. That's when I'd get scared. But if I didn't play it to the hilt, the comrades would suspect, and I'd be scared again. Come to think of it, for nine long years as a communist for the FBI, I was never anything but scared. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic. Undercover Man. Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Red Rover, Red Rover. I walk slowly down Dawson Street, pretending I'm not looking for anybody. Comrade Revson, who was supposed to rendezvous with me here, had better look sharp, because the sidewalks are crowded. He's supposed to pick me up so we can get down to the next shady item on the red agenda. All at once, I have company, and it isn't Comrade Revson. All right, Mr. Sovetic, we'll take a taxi from here. Who are you? Just keep walking and keep talking and head for the curb. I've got another date, so goodbye. Do as I tell you, and everything will be jolly. I asked you who you were. I'm not Comrade Revson, that's a start. You know somebody by that name? Both of us do. Stop right here. Now, listen, girl. Taxi? I don't even know you. But we both know Revson, don't we? Come on. Where to? 1010 Atherton Plaza, driver. Oh, do tell. Atherton Plaza? I'd have worn my clean shirt, but I never dreamed. Oh, quiet. Tell me, pretty maiden, could this be fun? Very definitely not. Mm-hmm. Now, what will Revson say when he doesn't meet me? We'll handle him. Who's we? You'll see. I see. Now, be quiet. A taxi is a public place. <laughs> We enter a district that makes Park Avenue look like a slum clearance candidate and pull up at a facade that would look natural with a mink canopy. We take the elevator to the fifth floor, and I'm being seriously worried. I don't know if this smart little brunette is for me or against me. Is she comrade or FBI? And how will I explain things to Revson? It sounds like a radio cliffhanger. Be sure to listen tomorrow, and I sincerely hope I'll be with you then. We stop at a white-paneled door... The girl lets herself in with her own key. In the lush living room, a fattish but solid man is sitting on the sofa. He smiles a nothing smile and waves a plump hand at a chair. Sit down. Yeah, but first, my name is Matt Svedek. What's yours? Mr. Svedek, this is Comrade Usatine. Usatine? Usatine? The name is not familiar to you, I'm sure. If it were, you might not be here. But I am here, and I'd like to know why. We may have a little job for you. Thanks a lot, but I have a job. Oh? I already told him not to be concerned about Revson. He'll undertake to explain to him, Comrade Svedek. You will? You will say nothing to him. Do you understand? No. No, I don't understand. Ah, you will. We've been watching your work, Comrade Svedek. We like it. We have decided to entrust you with your most important mission so far. Again, who is we? Some extremely important documents are being held for us in Canada. You have to secure them as we shall instruct you. Shasta will help you. Shasta? I'm Shasta. Oh. Come here, Svedek. Go ahead. You will proceed to Toronto, Canada, where you will be given an envelope. 
You will return and deliver the envelope to me with Shasta's assistance. Oh, well, I'll receive this envelope from whom? How? Just be in Toronto day after tomorrow. But what do I do when I get there? Where do I go? Just be there. It'll not be as simple as it sounds. Look, comrade, I'm a direct guy. Yes. Would this be a cozy little business to get rid of me? Do you know of any reason why we should want to get rid of you, comrade Svedek? Of course not. Why worry, then? Okay. When do I leave? Tonight. I'll wind up my modest little affairs. Chester. Comrade Josephine. Brief the comrade. Come with me. The other room will do. And here are your tickets, your plane transportation, train ticket, bus. All three, just to go to Toronto? In fact, you'll finish the trip by taxi. Anything to shake possible pursuit. Would be after me. Oh, don't be silly. The FBI, for one. What do you mean, for one? Who else would it be? Must you question everything? Live and learn. Not if you learn too much. Nicely put. I thought Comrade Revson was a strict disciplinarian. With us, you do exactly as you're told. With us? Does that mean you're something different from the party? Or something apart from it? Ask enough questions, Comrade Sovetic, and you'll ask none. I'm sorry. You may have use for a gun. Here, take this automatic. Oh, that's nice. Scared? I was admiring the gun. All right, take it then. You know what to do. Be in Toronto day after tomorrow. Just be there is enough? Mm Mm-hmm. Seems hardly enough. Impressive, though. Speak to nobody between now and the time you leave. Nobody at all? Nobody. All right. When you get back in town, call this number. Ask for you? Won't hurt. Yes. Aren't you afraid this place might be wired? Not in the least. Oh? And don't waste time thinking about it. It'll get you nowhere. All right, you may go now. Have you had your lunch yet? You may go, Comrade Svetik. No sale. Just bring back those documents. I'm on my own, and I'm worried, and a little scared. This is something new in being a communist for the FBI. I go down the elevator thinking, those cold fish upstairs talk like communists and treat me like one of them, up to a point. But then there's something offbeat about them, something very wrong about them that I can't figure. But I don't know Yusatine or Shasta, a girl with a name like a daisy. And I do know Revson, and he's my official boss. And I'm going to report to him warnings or not. I step out into the street and hail a cab. As I get into the taxi, two men get into a long black sedan behind us. And friends, there's no mistake about it. They're following me. I don't shake the shadows until almost evening. But I've got to shake them. I've got to tell Revson. And I've got to tip off the FBI. I finally get up to Revson's office. Is it important, Svetik? I think it may be very important. Then let us discuss it somewhere else. We can't discuss it somewhere else. This office may be wired. I tell you, we can't go anywhere else. I'm being followed. Followed? I've shaken them. But if we leave, they might pick me up again. Followed by whom? I don't know. That's one of the reasons I had to see you. They didn't want me to tell you. No? I figure you're my boss, not these strangers. Start talking. I couldn't meet you because some girl picked me up and brought me to a flossy guy named Yusatine. Yusatine. Mean anything to you? Go on. I'm supposed to go to Toronto tonight and pick up some envelope with important papers in it. If those shadows learn I reported back to you, I just may be in trouble. I took a chance. Any theories? I have heard of such such adventures from other comrades. This Yusatin and this Shasta may be counter-revolutionaries working against us. What should we do? Do? Do as they tell you. But if, as you suspect, a counter-revolutionary... Do as they tell you. And report everything to you? No. Yes. No, no. Just, just be careful. But shouldn't I report back to you? It's a chance to check on the enemies and traitors inside the party. If that is what they are. Well, what else would they be? All right, all right. Report to me. Good. But be careful. Do exactly as they tell you. Go. Go, sure. Go where? Do what? When I'm this much in the dark. For the first time in my long connection with the party, I've seen Revson disturbed and worried. Worried. He's scared. And I wonder why. He's tough and he doesn't scare easy. My own anxiety deepens. 
I make sure I'm not being followed. Then I find a pay station and dial my FBI contact. Hello? Oh, Mr. Adams? Who's calling Mr. Adams, please? Mr. Gwinnett. Adams talking. Go ahead. Where can I see you right away? I'm taking off for Toronto in half an hour. Well, let's see. This is Friday. There's a bank on Webster and 12th. Keeps open Friday evenings, close as Saturday. I have a safe deposit box there. We can go to the vault, take the box to a private booth and talk. That sounds good. Make it fast, though. Ten minutes? Well, that's fast. Okay. Very interesting, Matt. If that's interesting, you ought to see this little Shasta Daisy. She gave you an automatic? Yeah, here it is, right in my pocket. No, no, no. Don't you touch it. I've had enough of your fingerprints on it already. Here, let me fish it out of your pocket with a handkerchief. Yeah, so? Can you do something about that? Well, I'll check whatever prints the gal left on this gun against our files in Washington. See what the game is. Counter-revolutionaries? I don't know yet. FBI? Maybe? I wouldn't know, Matt, would I? When will you know an end of suspense? This cold sweat is ruining my clothes. Call me when you get back into town. Yeah. Lots of good luck, Matt. You think I'm going to need that much and that good? Call me, Matt. But it's easy. In fact, it's too easy to be true. I get to the United States-Canada line, and I don't have any trouble at all getting across because I don't go across. Before I start over, an old man bums me for a dime, thanks me kindly, and hands me a thick envelope, heavily sealed, and disappears. Not another word said. Easy, sure. But I know now that I've been followed and watched all the way and pointed out to the old man by my shadows. Why didn't my shadows pick up the envelope then? Why me? I don't know. But I'm scared now, scared solid. I go back home feeling foolish and unnecessary, and in some dark and terrible way, on the spot. To Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sivetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. Hello? Shasta? Who? Shasta, this is Matt Sivetic. I'm back. So soon? Yeah, I'll tell you all about it. Did you get it? I got it. Let's see, you uh, wanted to have lunch with me the other day. Well, it's too late now for that lunch. I had one. How about dinner? There's a noisy place in the 50s where we can talk. It's big, the food is good, and society fairly interesting. Pick me up in front of 1010 Atherton Plaza by 9. That's right. Just leave everything to me. You're certainly home ahead of schedule. Uh, let's talk about that where it's noisy, hmm? Smart man. Reliable fella. Bye-bye. Yeah, smart as the proverbial whip. Any St. Bernard dog could have done on that mission. Hello? Mr. Adams, please. Mr. Gwinnett calling. Oh, this is Adam Shoup. I want to talk to you right away. Hey, back early, aren't you? Where can I see you? Our bench in the park at nine. No good. Got a date with a fair Shasta at nine. Eight, then? Eight it is. Something I've got to tell you, too, friend. Well, what is it? Is it anything you can tell me now and save me a lot of... Hello? Hello? Ah. Uh... All right, Matt, that's your story. And I'm stuck with it. Uh. Now you... 
I might have got some pretty strong news for you. All right, come on, let's have it. Shasta and Yusatine are not counter-revolutionaries. Then why did Revson act so scared? Well, they're on his side, all right, but they play a pretty lone hand. And a grim one at that. Grimmest game on earth, maybe. Well, how do I figure to be the one they volley back and forth? I'll tell it to you fast, Matt. Yeah, I do. You've been tapped by the MVD. What? Mm-hmm. You've been playing around with the Russian secret police. Shasta and Yusatine are MVD agents. What do they want with me? Well, they're either testing you, or they're thinking of recruiting you into the secret police. Oh, no. Not for me. No, no, I wouldn't do it all. Not for us. First of all, you could never bring yourself to do the things they'd expect of you. These are the boys who buried an Alpenstock in Leon Trotsky's brain, just for example. <laughs> Definitely not my line of work. Oh, stop it, nothing. You wouldn't last. They'd get you, Matt. Now, the FBI doesn't ask that much from a man. I don't want any part of them. Now, that's the problem, Matt. They don't ask you to join, they tell you. Whether you like it or not, Matt, you've been drafted for the MVD. Well, what do you think I ought to do? You've got to finish the job they gave you. If you don't, you'll be in trouble. Oh, fine. If I come through for them, I'm promoted to the MVD. If I don't, I might be severely dead. Well, from now on, I'm having you watched constantly. Well, that way I'll have friendly witnesses to my murder. We'd better break it up now, Matt. You've disobeyed orders in seeing Revson and me. The MVD might uh, resent it. And who knows how better. Have a nice date with Shasta. <laughs> The restaurant where I took Shasta was so crowded I almost had to make an appointment just to check my hat and top coat. But my beautiful date had a drag. And we got a table where if you could read lips, you could hear somebody near you, almost. I told you it'd be noisy here. The better for others not to hear us, my dear. Right. Now about the envelope. I have it in my inside pocket here. Don't show it to me now. Nobody notices anybody but himself in this bunch. We are being watched. Where? Don't look now, you idiot. What about the envelope? Keep it. I can't afford to have it found on me. Can I afford it any better? You've got to get out of here before those FBI men know what you're up to. How do you know they're FBI? Let's have a gander. Don't turn it. That group at the table between us is getting up to dance. Use them for cover and get out of here. Now? Not yet. All right. Now. I do some fast, broken field walking through the packed restaurant. Just as I reach the door, I see the two men at the corner table jump up and come after me. FBI, nothing. They're my two MVD shadows. What made Shasta think they were FBI, or did she? I don't stop to ask questions. I jam on all canvas and sail past the check room. Do you have a hat and coat, sir? No, no thanks. I run outside and jump into a taxi. We're pulling away when the two MVD goons come out of the restaurant. That black sedan slithers to the curb and they get in. And off we go again. Around midnight, I get a chance to pull an old gag out of the gag book. I duck into a big drugstore. They're almost ready to close up, but I order a sandwich at the lunch counter, watch my chance, and slip into a phone booth and sit on the floor. Pretty soon, the lights go out. It gets quiet. I stand up and look out. The store is closed and the coast is clear. Very pleased with myself, I go to a door to unlatch it. Then my instinct issues a fast warning. Hit the floor, Mitch. A cop goes by, trying the doors. Then he continues on his rounds. I stand up again, start to unlatch the door again. Hold it, Mitch. The burglar alarm. If I open the door, the alarm will go off. If I'm picked up with that envelope on me, I'm in trouble with the cops and with the MVD. What to do? Call the FBI. Well, of course. I look through my pockets for a coin. Not a cent. I gave all my change to the taxi driver. Now what? The cash registers. Try them. Oh, yeah. Pennies. Nothing but pennies. Who needs them? I must have a coin on me. I've got to have one. Yeah. One solitary coin in the change pocket of my jacket. Oh, boy. Uh, lucky.
lucky for me. The first time I ever put a coin in that pocket. What number are you calling, sir? Birds, 3232. Two. Come on. You may have dialed the wrong number. Will you please try it again? Uh, return my coin, then. Yes, sir. Hey, what the... Operator! Operator! Operator, you collected my coin! Operator! Operator? I was calling Bridge 3232 and got a wrong number or something, and you collected my coin. Please drop another coin, and we will mail you a refund. I can't drop another coin. That was the last one I had. It's got to be that. I will try to ring your number. Bridge 3232. Come on, be there. Answer. Come on. Neil? Adams? Who's this? Gwinnett. Oh, you caught me just going out the door. What's up? Listen, I'm being followed by some MVD goons. I managed to get locked into a drugstore, but now I don't dare go out. Are the MVD still out there? No, but I can't let the cops find this envelope on me. Oh, that's right. And I've got to deliver it to you, team tomorrow or else. Yeah. All right, do this. Hide the envelope somewhere around that store where nobody else is likely to find it. And tell me where you're putting it to. You or I can get it tomorrow, see? In case I get picked up, right. <laughs> you boys think of everything. Now hold on while I find a place to put the envelope and... and... Hello? I'm here. Anything wrong? I haven't got the envelope. What? I must have slipped it into the inside breast pocket of my top coat instead of my jacket. Well, where is your top coat? I left it at the nightclub when the MVD got on my trail. Mm, better go back and get it, boy. Yeah, I'd sure better. Funny thing, I open the front door, the alarm goes off and rings like mad. And nobody, absolutely nobody pays any attention. I run all the way back to the nightclub. It's jammed with the after-theater crowd. I head for the check room, breathing hard. Yes, sir? I've got a hat and top coat here. Your check, sir? Your oh, check. Let's see. Well, I can't find any check on me. Did you give me a check? I always give a check, sir. It's a size 42, herringbone tweed, gray-green. Well, I can't give it to you without a coin check. Well, yeah, I'll help you find it. I'm sorry. That isn't permitted, sir. I'm not going to steal somebody's umbrella. Are you uh, sure you had a hat and coat? Yes, I'm sure. You ran out a couple hours ago saying you didn't. I've got a hat and coat here, I tell you. I'll have to see your check. Well, I can't find a check on me. I'm sorry. Well, what does it look like? It's a little brass coin with a number on it. Oh, sister. I put it in a pay telephone. Oh, brother. That's a new one. Mr. Fogarty! Who are you calling? The house detective. Mr. Fogarty! No, don't do that. Mr. Fogarty! <laughs> I can't stay here and be arrested. I've got to get out. Panic. Panic to get away and escape. I dash into the street again and right into the arms of the powerful MVD men. They muscle me into the black sedan. I stop fighting. What's the use? I'm tired. It's all over. Why fight? Give up. Why struggle? It's all over. figure of a comrade you are, Svetik. I did my best. You did your best. Yes. Then where is the envelope? Well, I told you. I'll go back to the nightclub when they close up. My coat will be the only one uncalled for. No. Why not? Svetik, you know what happens to those in our society who mishandle important responsibilities? I, I suppose so. In this case, that papers happen to be of no importance. What? They are of absolutely no value. It was a test. A trial to see whether you were worthy of an important promotion. Promotion? Hmm, then you failed. I will tell you now what will happen to you. What? You are unworthy of command, Svetik. Therefore, Svetik, you will return to the ranks. Go back to my cell with Revson? It is all you are fit for. Well, comrade, I'm always ready to serve the party in any capacity whatever. And if you... Enough, enough. Show him out, men. <laughs> The MVD men turned me loose on the sidewalk. I'm in the clear and with a whole skin. Almost deliriously, I think, Svetik, if you ever wanted to be wrong, this was the time for it. I walked down the street, breathing in the cool night air, unraveling the knots in my stomach. 
I fell out of the frying pan almost into the fire. It's almost like social security being back in the frying pan again. It could have been worse. I might be an MVD agent by now and a dead man a year from now. But I don't fool myself. I'm still in big trouble. I'm a communist for the FBI. I walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews with a word about the story you've just heard. In this story, as in all others, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Svetik, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us, won't you?